The day disappeared with the day I was healed. Yo, Low, Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to be making a beat with presets. When I was new, I knew very little about sound design at all or mixing or processing, so presets were really a lifeline. And I was also contacted by a company called Hex Loops, and they are have a new trap massive presets, and they would like me to review it. And I figured it'd be helpful for you also as a viewer just to see it in action. So that is how I'm, I will be reviewing this. It is also 50% off. So we're going to go kind of fast because we're using presets. And, and the great thing about presets is they speed things up. So it is a trap bundle. So they've got sort of the darker, eerier sounds in them. Uh, and I already have a video on how to install stuff like this. So you can go check that out if you're interested. Um, but first, I'm just going to look for a bell sound in the patches provided and see if we can get some sort of a melody rolling. I'm going to work at around, let's go for like 95 BPM. So these are their bell sounds. So we maybe something repetitive to get us rolling here. So let's go like that. I'm going, so I'm playing C minor, so it's got these notes in them. I've got this triplet. So I've got a triplet thing going on. So dun 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 dun. dun. dun 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 dun. And maybe we'll go to the five. Something like that. Uh, let's see, do they provide us... So in these patches, they have used the macro knobs. Now, they're not... Um, anyways, macro knobs, what they do is you can use them to quickly change the sound without necessarily using all these knobs on the front page, which uh, is really nice. So let's see here. We've got a bell tone. Let's see how what tones they give us. It sounds like it's messing with an EQ. Um, let's find out. Bell tone equalizer. No, there's nothing on an EQ. I just want a high shelf to go down. Maybe that's, uh, let's try something a little more dissonant. Maybe a, just a half step down. So, um, yeah, let's roll with that. Makes sense, because in minor keys, typically, we will raise the, the fifth because we need a leading tone. Um, I mean the third. We'll raise the third. Don't worry about that if you don't know music theory. It's just a thing you typically do in minor modes. So, okay, there's our first sound. Let's lay down another one here. We've got some 808 sounds. Let's, let's hear those, I guess. We're going to want to audition those. That's too low. Uh -huh. Swagged. Nice. I like that one. Let's roll with that one for now. So this is our uh, 808. Just sort of making a quick loop here. We got that click at the beginning. I wonder if we can do something about that. We 
we'll keep it simple. So this sort of blurs, we need that to be a little clearer. So I'll hold Alt to change the note length. Maybe, um, I feel like this should go maybe down. And then this one, you know, we're, this is like our off thing. So we'll do a boom, boom. I think an octave lower might be too low. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, maybe for now. I don't know. Um, we'll roll with that. So we've got an 808. Let's try out. Let's add some more from our amazing hex loop sample pack, of course. Or not sample pack, preset pack. I hope I've not been saying sample pack. That would be embarrassing. Um, so, so they did use additional things here as far as like you're able to like specify your browsing but the sample packs got more useful stuff than they went for quality over quantity which is i am a big fan of that so um i think it's small enough that you can just use the browser and the great thing is the sounds that you have are really usable typically for most stuff like for here probably not a spot on our track for that one yet that, I could see us using that. Let's also, uh, let's low pass that. Or let's just turn the, the drive. Let's see if we could fit that in there. We'll call this our pluck, um, even though it's labeled the lead. Let's copy it, paste it in, and just turn it down. Uh, let's get some drums in here. Uh, I'm going to just look for some general hat sounds. We've got an 808 drum kit up here. Goes. Are we going to go for the sprinkler, the sprinkler things? Let's just name it hat. I am doing this in the piano roll. <laughs> Let's change our step to a half. There are various ways of sequencing drums. Uh, I like having the steps here. Uh, the FL is going to put back the step sequencer for the volume in here, which is going to be really great. I forgot what it was called because it's not been in here for several versions. Maybe that's a little too much. Volume automation is really important for very percussive parts like this. Creates a sense of syncopation and uh, a sense of what beat is the most important beat. Maybe we'll have something like this building and then yeah we'll make that important and then instead of that let's try that ah <laughs> no that's not a good idea let's try this so uh we're to a we're back to the eighth note thing i don't necessarily want that We'll put a roll here. Now, we could grab multiple hats and do stuff here, but I don't want to do that right now. 
Alt U to cut it. That's maybe too much. What the heck? Let's try this. Let's try, hmm. Let's go down, actually. So it is pretty repetitive, but because of the complexity of it, we don't need to make major modifications to it. I'm going to leave it for now. And I changed the ending because the ending is very unique. So it's going to stick out in the listener's head. So if that repeats, it's going to it's gonna make it sound very dull very quickly. There's sort of like this fine line between uh, too much and too little. So anyways, we have our those basics down. Let's try looking for... We've got a bass bass, but let's add in just like a, a regular bass. And uh, let's look for that. So let's go to our trap massive sounds. And they, they have things with bass in the name. So let's look at what those sound like. Actually, uh, let's see bass here. Trap bass 2. It's like a kick sound. Maybe like a good layer. Oh. I like that sound. I'm not going to use it here, but I like it. This was labeled kick. Why are these ones not labeled kick? This is what I was thinking of. We could lay down like some sort of greasy, angry person. My note is so small. Since we're playing just like, typically you want the root note in your bass. Oh, maybe we could layer something different here and we could create a cool texture. That's too low. We can go high though. Let's try, so this is our, our base layer one. And it's kind of hilarious because I see other people, they have so many patterns and um, I just... Whoops, I didn't want to do that. That is not the way I typically work. All right, browser. Oh, my stomach is angry at me. We're supposed to be having pizza later. So let's go to, I wonder if they have brass. Do they have a brass soundy thing? That'd be, brass typically sound pretty good. I'm probably going to grab a piano from somewhere else. Here's bass five. Oh. I like bass five. Let's run with bass five. Bass five or bass layer two. I'm sure I could probably come up with shorter names for some of this. So, ooh, is this monophonic? It is monophonic. I'm, I probably want to do this then. Ooh. Monophonic, if you're not familiar with the term, just means that when I play notes, they slide to the next note. So I don't need to worry about like notes overlapping and sounding really muddy. Uh, and this, this sound is just a good. It's just a good monophonic sound. That's interesting. Um, I think it has to, what is our, what note is our kick playing? A kick is playing a D. Let's change it to an, a D sharp. It should really be considered an E flat because we're in C minor. I didn't notice that earlier. See how much that's better. So 
So we're going to go for that slur, get a second rhythm. I'm going to go bow, wow. Oh man, I don't know though. F sharp, this could be pretty bad with that right there. Maybe we'll pull up. So the thing about having a B natural instead of a, a, because we're thinking a G minor chord would sound darker, but in this case, having that, uh, that's called a leading tone sound. So having this has a really nice pull. Um, watch. This might be a little early. It might be better starting at the fourth beat. See, yeah, uh, let's move this over. Let's try a chromatic step upwards, and it's like a call to the modal minor. We again run into, it sounds like our 808 does not like what we're doing here. Maybe we just cut out short. And what's our other bass layer doing? Bass layer one is playing that G. Let's cut that short. Let's mimic it. We have a, a still a little bit of a kafuddle. Whenever you hear that, blah, 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 that's definitely a low end problem. Um, let's check it out. It's the transition of the mono, so let's just make it a gap. Maybe this note. Oh, you know what? It's this kick. That's what it is. It's a harmony. It's not even the problem. Um, so because the kick comes in, low notes that um, just is good to know. When you're playing low notes, um, the harmonies, if you hit like a fifth, the fifths usually work out, but this is a third. Um, B to G, it's a major third. It just does not, it's not a good sound. So maybe we could sacrifice the kick at this last piece and instead go for the tonal push of the other bass lines. So if we're going to do that, we should probably make these louder, which makes sense. So the way I'm going to do this, it's not necessarily a popular thing to do in um, this sort of music, but I'm going to create an event in the piano roll, which is completely foreign to some people. And it's basically like an automation clip, but it's tied to the piano roll, which has a nice byproduct of being contained when I move it around. As opposed to automation clips, you have to remember to move them. See that how it self-adjusts? So that's nice. We want that. I don't know if I'm talking too much or too little or explaining the just the right amount, but uh, I want to toss in a pad sound beneath Let's see if there's... Now, pad sounds can be quite picky. I typically go to sample-based stuff for this. Let's see if there's one in the hex loop preset pack that'll work out. We have some risers, some... Ooh, a classic synth. What's a classic synth sound like? It's a trap classic synth. This is a, a trap stuff. Ooh, let's try 12, 3, 7. 7. So 7 should be a 5th. And 3, this should be minor. If we make this 4, will it be major? <laughs> um, let's see. Let's try tossing this in. I'm just trying to create atmosphere, you know? Does holding it do anything? Not really. I'm not digging this. Let's try something else. Uh, okay. 
my mouse wheel doesn't want to work in here. They have these risers. I guess I should show these off. They're actually really good. I especially love this. This is more like a drop sound. There's a famous song that uses a sound like that. But I can't remember it, so it must not be that famous. Huh. That's cool. You know what? This could work. Let's slap the delay up. I like the detuniness of it. And it looks like there was a... Uh, yeah, you probably don't want that. That actually could be cool for like a, a reggae type of thing. Verb. This could get messy if I'm not careful. Six is already attached to this. I wonder if he knows that the effect was off when he saved the preset. Cool. Try that pad. And then I think we'll have the elements to just peel apart and make a basic thing. No, this has tuning problems. Let's go to, I'm going to go to a contact instrument for this. Just because this typically, I'm not, just, it's going to work out better. Let's grab, now this is probably way out of, this is a kind of an expensive sound to pull out. So uh, this is called Spitfire's Tundra. It's a, it was based on playing sounds really soft, but they have a particular sound in here that I really enjoy. It's these flutes. They sound so amazing. Whoops. Lowe's High and Wood have the same articulations, I believe. Just that. That's like so nice. It'll serve as a nice like background bed. We'll just use it as a drone. I could also grab some of the brass I have in here, but I don't want to go into stuff that um, I think it's a little unfair for the type of, we're using presets here. I just needed one sound. It's the moral of the story is not every sound you're going to necessarily find in one preset pack. That's not a bad thing. It's just the truth. So, okay, there we go. Let's, uh, let's uh, split this up and make sort of an intro. So here is our intro for our intro. So I have different stages. This isn't necessarily going to be the, that's your fourth thing. We'll keep our bass out though. We'll have our our 808 out for sure and our pluck out. So we're just repeating. Oh yeah, no, none of that yet. Okay, okay. So we have that. Let's um take this, clone it over. Oh my gosh, let me put it where I want. Okay. So there's our second. So the intro intros to, it shouldn't be too long. I've seen ones. I've made ones that are too long. And then it just introduces the idea. We've, we've got our idea. We've got our tonal texture, pretty clear what's going on. Like, Oh, it's going to be a dark sort of beat. Unless you want to be mysterious and, and totally throw the listener off. That could be cool too. So here we have seven and probably still don't want the hi-hat. I actually you know what we maybe bring the hi-hat in. Definitely don't want to give the bass away yet. So we'll cut the bases and the 808 might be fine by itself. We ha we don't have the most complicated drums, a hi hat and an 808. So
We also have the layer. Did I bring the layer in on the first instance? I didn't. Hmm. Let's bring the 808 up louder. Yeah, we're, we'll probably have, well, there'll be some mixing done. Let's send this to a track. I, because I'm not mixing, mixing right now, I just want it louder, but I don't want it. I don't want to turn the volume up in here because when I do mix, I'd like to know that this isn't clipping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. So like back it that's typically something you really don't want to do. But for now it'll work out. So here, I mean this is sort of getting a little mixing, but I feel like we can approach it. This this melody thing, it's all the same level, not as interesting. So to get a little more juice out of our patch, we could have it be like this mysterious thing that grows and shrinks a little bit. So instead of it all being like down, we could have it be softer. And the idea is you want your intros generally to be a little bit softer because when your bass hits, you've prepped the listener with a good contrast. So it'll actually sound like it hits a lot harder. So um, I'm thinking like down. And then this stuff being like quite a bit softer. Do, 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 do. And then maybe this one not as loud. Yeah, see, it's got a lot more character to it now. Dun dun dun. Maybe this is a lot of dun 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 dun. Softer, and then comes back a bit. Now these might be a little too soft in general. There's a way to scale these all at the same time, if I can remember it. I can't remember it right now, so we're gonna do it the old school way. That's manual, if you didn't know. And then we're generally getting around the same level, but it's, uh... so let's take our new adjusted one. And actually, if you want to be really fancy, you'll adjust them a little bit on each one. That way it sounds cool. And not every sound is this responsive to velocity changes. So for example, this pluck sound, I'm probably not going to worry too much about it because we've already got the impression from our intro. So let's see. Gives a lot more room. Oh, we're actually we're clipping in here. It's not a big deal if this is, I can't remember, 64-bit. If the audio being run through it has 32-bit depth, we can actually turn it down another channel and not lose stuff. Uh, so let's see. Reverb will have the effect of making things sound like they're further back, which in this case is fine. Uh, we, we need that third G this time. Boom, 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 boom. If we're going to do it, go all the way. I guess it could be quarters. Why am I having such a hard time with this? It's a triplet. That's what it was getting me. Now here, this, you might even consider marking this in your track, like Alt-T, whoops, that's not Alt-T, Alt-T, and call this like SP for special or something. This is a moment that you should consider later on, but maybe not focus right now. You might throw something special, do something special. This is the moment to catch your listener and engage them, because if we're going to drop the bass here, we've set ourselves up musically for something quite interesting. It might be as simple as just playing different notes, having that bass go boom, 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 or um, just completely throwing them off, dropping everything and just having the kick there. Just something that'll make your track sound unique. Maybe we'll have the kick pull up because uh, we've been pulling that move with everything else. 
that could be cool, but um, this is like you have unique moments. You got to take advantage of those when they pop up. And also, uh, I have my hat muted, so I don't think I want the hat yet, though. And this hat's kind of long. Let's make it short. Same thing as goes for the dynamics of the hat. I did it already a little bit, but I kind of I have some things I'm hearing I'd like to change, but I'll do that later. So we've got this, and then our bass comes in. And our uh, sounds as though. So we definitely need to toss in some layer kicks. So let's grab, um, I actually don't like the kicks in this pack. We generally, we want just something at the beginning, like a soft thud. And the way we could probably do it is by grabbing something that actually sounds quite bright and a kick sharp and just layering this in at the same rhythm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the layer base, not the layer base, the 808 and take it and move it all to C. I'm sure there's a command for this. And we're going to, it's quite bright, but all we're just, we're just going to slap an EQ on it. Because we're going to let the, this will really be just sort of a short thud. That way the fullness of our long tones can come through. And then we'll do side chain EQ, pick a frequency for this guy and do cuts in the other channels. You know, all the basic tricks. So then we can grab a transient master. There's a couple options. FL has one that I really like because it's pretty visual. Of course, you use your ears. But I grabbed the Native Instruments one, whatever. I just want the attack up. We got to nail our frequency a bit better. Yeah, I go through. I'm not necessarily happy with the results we're getting here. So this is something I don't want to get on a sidetrack train. But go back, look at that. So anyways, I guess this is as far as we'll go right now uh, for the sake of length because I'm not sure how long this is. Uh, 30 minutes. So let's go. Uh, let's shorten this up right now. So here's what we got. 30 minutes of work. But now I've seen some presets. I think I've given a fair share of ideas. And uh, hopefully some of this stuff has been useful for you on how it works and we've even broken it up into a little intro that drops into a, a like I, I wouldn't call this a drop, but it does something there. So there you have it. We are, there's a lot of places we could go. At this point, I hit Control S out of habit. We'll just call this Beat Trap uh, Hex Loops. That's descriptive. 
And so, yeah, if you have any questions about this stuff, let me know. Uh, of course, working by myself, I'm, I'm substantially faster than this, but I wanted to explain what I was doing. Subscribe and have a blessed day. I'm <laughs> sorry.